Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is November 2nd. Right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery here. You can see the upper level low spinning across the region, bringing some good precipitation amounts to the North Puget Sound here this morning. Cumuliform clouds moving on the Oregon coast. Thunderstorm potential down there again today, maybe even into the Willamette Valley. This will continue to spin across the area, weaken and move east during the day today. Here comes Friday's system. Here comes the energy, subtropical moisture all the way back here. Atmospheric River is on its way, folks. This is going to punch through BC into Alberta here, bring a strong gradient and then a lot of precipitation. And in the wake of that, the cold air is going to arrive across the Pacific Northwest. And that's what everybody wants to know about here. We'll take a look at that here in a moment. Now, taking a look here across the region, you can see the winter weather advisory, winter storm warning, some hydraulic outlooks all the way down through the Sierra Nevada here. Active weather is on its way here across the Pacific Northwest. Here's for Eastern Washington. Wind could Yes, could get up over 50 miles per hour late Friday night, early Saturday morning. Tree damage, power outages are possible, blowing dust, you name it. We got it here through eastern Washington, wind-wise, Friday night through Saturday. This is all the way down to the Sierra Nevadas. they got some winter storm warnings, winter weather advisories. This is bound to catch some travelers off guard here, even though we're going to be talking about it here for the next couple of days. But some good snow totals coming through the Sierra Nevadas, just like to point that out there for anybody traveling in that direction. So now taking a look here, you can see the upper level low spinning over a Western Washington, bringing those showers along the coast to Oregon. Some snow still building up across the Cascades of Oregon, a little bit for Cascades of Washington. This system kicks off to the east, get a little bit of a break Thursday morning before the next system roars on shore, starts off as snow across the Cascades, but then you'll see that warm air punch into the region here. And really, except for the higher peaks of the North Cascades of Washington, it's going to be all rain, maybe the volcano peak down there mount rainier we'll still be getting some snow but you see the simon shirk river slide down here as we go on into friday afternoon across the region big precipitation maker coming in here folks uh the her is showing some lightning potential for the oregon coast into the lamp valley again today had some thunderstorms out there yesterday even a water spout was reported out here off the oregon coast talk about needle in a haystack there now nam 3km Check out some of these winds as we go through the early Friday morning hours, Thursday night, Friday morning hours, and then Friday afternoon. It starts for eastern Washington. Look at the higher terrain, really getting some great strong winds here through the higher terrain east slopes of the Cascades. I think it's probably overdoing the central Puget Sound a bit. Probably mid-40s is more realistic there, but some strong southeast winds across northwest interior, straight to Georgia, some gusty winds along the coastline as well. Now, mm -hmm. taking a look here, this is the European on the left versus the GFS. You see the strong winds as we roll through Friday morning into Friday afternoon. Look at eastern Washington. Some gusts over 50 miles per hour are possible, and the European showing a strong surge of westerly winds down the straight of Juan de Fuca all the way down towards Muckleteo there. Would be Island getting some pretty good gusts with that. Now taking a look here, this is a wide view of this atmospheric river on the way. You can see it move down Vancouver Island and really kind of hang out on western Washington for a bit there before it slides down into Oregon. But that is our atmospheric river. There's BC, Washington, Oregon, and this would be about 2 p.m. on Friday. So really good precipitation amounts coming across the region here. But there is going to be an exception here, especially for the central Puget Sound and some of the rain-shadowed areas east of the Cascades as well. I'll show you that here in a moment. So now looking at total precipitation in inches, European on the left, GFS on the right. Here comes the atmospheric river there. GFS really showing you that rain shadow for the central Puget Sound area here, straight of Georgia. And you can see eastern Washington, this atmospheric river just slams into the terrain here. And atmospheric rivers, again, they're only 9,000, 10,000 feet thick. So it just doesn't get over into the eastern portions here. As you get these downsloping winds off the Cascades and off the Olympic Mountains here into the central Puget Sound. Although the European is showing over an inch of rainfall here coming up for Seattle, you can see it's lesser amounts if you versus if you go south. Tacoma, two inches. Look at this, Olympia, 2.6. Some areas down towards Portland, possibly three inches out of this. Just crazy totals coming up here, folks. It's a good thing we're not later in the season. We don't have a big snowpack built up here, and the rivers aren't running high just yet because this would be flooding problems if so. Now, taking a look here, this is... 8,850 millibars, 5,000 feet. You can see why the rain shadow is going to be going on across some of the central Puget Sound here. You can see the winds ripping across here. They hit these mountains and they downslope here and they kind of warm up the atmosphere and kind of keep that precipitation from falling as much as areas just north and just south of that rain shadow. Now taking a look here, here we go. 
Polar lobe number one, this one was a much weaker here, but that's associated with our upper level low currently. That kicks out of the region. Stronger polar lobe moves down across the area. That's the atmospheric river, windy conditions. And then this is the one we're looking at for the cold air. You can see it set up just off Vancouver Island, Western Washington here as we go on into Monday morning. But there is a problem with this lobe here, and we're trying to work out these details. I'll show you that here in a second. Now, look in here. This is 500 millibars, 18,000 feet. You need specific trajectories here across Pacific Northwest to get lowland snow. And this one's a little bit lazy. It comes off of southwest or southeast Alaska here, takes a long trajectory and back into California. This is a little bit long of a trajectory. It's too long over water here. So we're going to be watching this. There's going to be some pretty darn cold air aloft and some pretty cold air getting into BC here. But you really need it to line up well here to get a substantial snowstorm down into the lowlands. Looking here, 1985, November, look at these 500 millibar winds come right off the BC coast, north tip of Vancouver Island and right back into Oregon. That's what you want. You want this short trajectory over water here. You don't want it over water too long. It modifies and the low pressure gets stretched out and elongated. And then you get a southerly flow at the surface here that warms up the valley. So it's tough to get it with the current trajectory the models are showing here but there are other ways you can get snowfall around here we'll go over that here in a moment you can see that polar low back in 1985 just coming out and clipping the region that's what you want again that short trajectory there so now looking here is the european on the left gfs on the right now here comes the atmospheric river rolling through the area. You can see mostly rain by the time you get in towards Friday afternoon and evening. Slide down the Oregon coast. And behind that, the cold air is going to arrive. Then you can see along the Cascades of Oregon, Washington. It's going to be all snow by that point. The higher terrain, Olympic Mountains, Vancouver Island. Now here comes the Arctic low here. You can see the gradient start to go as this cold air sags south across British Columbia here. Lots of snow coming here for the mountains of the Cascades in Oregon. The higher uh, foothills there across the region. And some of the snow tries to get down towards the surface. It's going to be tough, though, with this big elongated trough off the coastline here and this pretty nebulous, not great low pressure system for snow. But still, look at the GFS is still calling for some areas of moderate snow across western Washington here down towards Portland. Just excluding the Willamette Valley a little bit here, but it's still showing some snowfall potential here. This cold air is going to be close and there's going to be a cold air coming off the coastline here of BC. So there are going to be some convection potential here, maybe some convergent zone, maybe some upslope flow into the Olympics or, or Vancouver Island. There's other ways you can get snow out of this, but it is going to be a tricky forecast here as we go through the next few days. But we'll continue to watch it and try to pinpoint details as we go on into tomorrow and future days. However, now let's look at this system that rolls through here. Look at this powerful low bringing the winds and the atmospheric river that moves across Alberta here. You can see it on the GFS too, a little bit weaker with the low, but then you see that move through here. And in the wake of that, this Arctic high and this very cold air is gonna move down across British Columbia there. So this is pretty close to the region here. So we have to watch out for the details as we go day by day here. You can't just rule out lowland snow at this point with this kind of cold air around just because the trajectory is bad. There's other ways to get it through here. So we'll continue to watch that day by day here coming up. Now I want to show you here also, this is the 850 millibars, 5,000 feet. As we go, look at that warm air blasting here with the atmospheric river into western Washington, Vancouver Island. Quickly crashes back down below the passes. But look at this trajectory again. This air is coming off the coast of southeast Alaska, and it's a little bit long. It's a little, hanging out over the water a little bit too long. But you do get this really cold air across southern BC here too. So maybe that'll spawn another low as we get a better trajectory a little localized area of snowfall maybe as we go on in through early next week. Things to watch for. It's just not one and done here. There is potential for lowland snow, but we have to kind of work out those details coming up here. It just doesn't look too enticing at this point. Now, right now, Stevens Pass, you see the atmospheric river and then the snow levels crashing as we go through Saturday morning. Same thing for Mount Hood a little bit later down there, but you can clearly see the atmospheric river there. Whidbey Island, gusts probably up into the 50s here. The mean is right around 50 here as we go through Thursday night into Friday morning. This is for Seattle, probably the first gale of the year coming. You can see the mean into the low 40s here, maybe some mid 40s showing up around the central Puget Sound. Spokane is going to get wild out there. Look at maybe even a high wind warning might be needed out there. Some of these ensembles, ensembles are showing up over 50 miles per hour here. The high wind 
uh, cuts off at right about 58 miles per hour. Anything 58 or higher is considered a high wind and will need a warning. So probably wind advisories coming across some of the Pacific Northwest with this system here. Pendleton, the mean is well up into the 40s as well. Portland, not quite as windy here, just blustery into the 30s, most likely. Astoria, probably low 40s. As we go, 24-hour precipitation totals. Let's take a look at this. You can see the upper level low moving out of the region here. Then here goes our atmospheric river blasting into Vancouver Island. Washington, you can see the rain shadow effect across the central Puget Sound. Eastern Washington, Oregon, BC, rain shadow going on as well. Then you can see this slide down south across the region here, Portland, Oregon. And then this is going to be our uh, polar low here or our arctic low that tries to bring some snowfall back across the region it's going to do so for the mountainous areas will it get into the metropolitan areas is yet to be seen here folks but it doesn't look like a great trajectory again just quite yet but we need to watch it now this is looking at the 10-day total precipitation for california just wanted to highlight this this is pretty good especially for an la nina year getting this kind of precipitation all the way down into southern california here so hopefully this holds true for them you can see the sierra nevada getting up over three inches here in some locations. Now this is total snow in the European. This is um, yesterday afternoon's run. You see a little bit of snowfall showing up for the lower elevations, even down through the Willamette Valley. A lot of snow for the Cascades, Blue Mountains, Northeast Oregon, Northeast Washington, Okanagan Highlands. Really gonna get good snow out of this. For a lot of the region, this is a great winter storm, but down into the valleys, that's why the settlers came here and settled down along the coastlines at first because they didn't have to deal with the deep snows as the winter got going here. So you can see it's going to be a much diff more difficult task to get things down to the coastal areas or in the inland valleys here as far as snow goes. Now this is looking at total snows. We go out 10 days here on yesterday's European as well. Look at, I mean, all the way down through the Sierra Nevadas, the mountainous areas are just going to get hammered. Good snowpack is going to be building up here, folks, across the next week to 10 days. Now taking a look here, this is for the atmospheric river. A uh, much stronger one coming here than last round here. You can see category three, even category four across the southwest Oregon coastline there. A little bit weaker north as you go through Vancouver Island. It's really going to highlight Washington and Oregon as we go here. This one is almost actually flirting with Cat 4 here along the Washington coast. In fact, you can see it almost gets there between 24 and 48 hours, but not quite powerful enough in the vapor transport category, but it's close. Now look at six to 10 days. You can see the bullseye here across Pacific Northwest, eight to 14 days similar with the bullseye there across Montana. Good risk of heavy snow coming up here. I, I'd probably put that at moderate if I was them. I mean, this is it's it's coming for the Cascades and for the Rockies, folks. It's definitely coming. Now, taking a look really quick at the wave forecast, you can see the waves building up along the Oregon coast with the system. They're kind of moving out of the area. A little bit of a break Saturday or Thursday, sorry. And as we go on through Friday morning, though, another slug of waves come in there. It's another swell comes in there. And look at some of this wave action along the Washington, Oregon coast as we go through the day Sunday. Pretty good wave action coming along there. So good wave watching here, at least through what, about Monday night, it looks like off and on here coming for the next few days. But anyway, yeah, so the upper level low will kick out today. Maybe a thunderstorm across the coast. There goes Friday's system. So tropical moisture is going to really come into the region. High confidence for that. High confidence for some good winds coming across the area. And really high confidence for the cold air to come into the region. But we have a lot of details to work out before we can start saying we have a good chance for lowland snow at this time. It does not look that great right now. But like I said, with Arctic air close by, we can get surprises here across the region into the valleys. Uh, especially with convergent zones or any kind of convection that may develop with it. So we'll just continue to watch that for now. But you're definitely going to feel it here as we go on in through later this week and into early next week. The cold air will be arriving. It's very early in the season for it. Very unusual this time of year to be getting this. And it almost makes you wish that it would have waited a couple of weeks and got a little bit colder, took a little bit better trajectory, and we'd be talking about a major snowstorm even for the lowland areas. But maybe this is a... Um, something a sign of things to come through later November or December who knows it is a La Nina year so we're probably going to be flirting with cold air as we go through the season again at some point but anyway hope you guys are liking these videos click like subscribe leave some comments below and I'll talk to you guys about this tomorrow